Welcome to another edition of On Report here on Super League TV, where today we're actually focusing on the Championship. We're six games into the season already, and a lot of changes ahead this year and next year. Very important couple of years for them. We're joined by Paul Rowley from Lee Centurions, Mark Aston from Sheffield, and John Keir from Batley. Um, first of all, then, if we can just maybe assess the season so far. We're very early stages, but maybe start with you, Paul, because you've had an incredible start, haven't you? Yeah, we've had a first start. I just think for me it's been expected. Um, the quality of the championship has ever has increased this year. The uh, you know the the dual contracts had its impact as well in certain areas with certain clubs. So uh, the, you know it's it's very unpredictable at times. But I think everybody can beat anybody. We keep, we keep using that same phrase, but it's shown week on week. Uh, you know, with, with uh, Rochdale beat Batley last week on John's team there. So. Uh, Barrow beat Sheffield, and, and and so it's it's just showing it really is even an even uh, even league. We've got some tough games coming up, so you know we we realise we need to improve uh, to, to beat uh, the likes of, of uh, Sheffield who are coming up for us soon. Incredible score lines for the first few games. As you say you tested maybe the last couple of games, but how important is it to make the start that that you have? Well, it's good to get the points in the bag, obviously, and and give a bit of continuity to the players, a bit of. Uh, confidence to the lads as well so because we've got a lot of new players and a lot of new personnel but uh, there's a lot of money riding on this year so uh, it's, it's always good to have the points in the bag and uh, and be sitting up there you know we wouldn't swap with anyone at this moment in time so we're we're, uh, we're pleased to be uh, at the top of the tree and Mark for you I know you missed the first game unfortunately so you've got a game in hand but uh, a new home for you as well as defending champion yeah, it's a bit of a transition season for us obviously you know we've the stadium's changed significantly and Don Valley's no more. So, you know, we've gone down to Owlerton and it's, it's different dimensions and the facilities are a lot different. But, you know, we're not looking for excuses. I thought Barrow on the day were very good. And as Paul said there, is that there's a lot of teams and a lot of things riding for a lot of... There's five going down. So there's a lot of desperate teams that will, if you're not on your metal uh, week in, week out, they can beat you. And we found that, you know, Barrow were great on the day, they just did the simple things right and, and beat us and we had no complaints about that. But we just, we always start a little bit slowly, don't we? And then when the ground start firming up, we get a little bit better. And we're getting a little bit better now, we're getting a few people back and we've had a bit of a, a change with the club with, you know, people like Liam Higgins retiring and uh, Alex Soshak out for 12 months, Joe Hurst is still three or four months away, Eddie Batty, so there's a lot of players that, that have changed and, you know, you talk about starting the season, you need the continuity of the players and uh, we haven't quite had that this year and we've changed not only the home ground but we've changed the training venues as well, so it's been a tough start but, you know, we're getting there now. Uh, John, first six games for you, how would you uh, reflect on those? Well, look, we've been consistently inconsistent, there's no doubt about that. We've had some really good periods, we've had some woeful periods as well, but uh, you've got to expect that because we've had our main pivot out, Ben Black hasn't played yet and uh, you know he's looking some weeks away yet and we've got a 22-year-old lad who's, who's having to run the team and uh, he's struggled at times, Scott Leatherbad, and he's looked really good at other times, so uh, we're coming to terms with it as well, but I totally agree with what Mark said and uh, you know there is an air of desperation that's raised intensity levels and people are talking about that in Super League with two going down, well there's a third of the competition going down in the Championship, so uh, it, it is, it's, you, you must turn up every week psychologically ready to play and uh, obviously Paul's team have have been sensational, you know, and to, to they I feel they're the only consistent team at this moment in time in the competition and the rest of us have all got plenty of work to do. Well as we say, change is kind of on the horizon and Paul mentioned the quality of the championship now and feel free to, to chip in with your own thoughts. But do you think that in quality, that intensity, the competition has stepped up another gear this year because of, of what's happening later on this year and into next I season? Think, uh, I think what it has done, it's it's encouraged your your higher quality and players to maybe put the faith in in signing for clubs like us because they've just uh, seen a new pathway, you know, with the change in the system. So uh, you know, we've just re-signed Tom Spencer. So somebody like to re-sign somebody like that wouldn't have been uh, possible because he's an ambitious lad and he wants to play Super League. So he he can now see a pathway with the team that he's at rather than uh, you know the old. Uh, Get out clauses that we often hear about in contracts. You know, yeah, we'll sign for you, but what a get out clause because really they have hopes that they're going to play for Super League. But now they can do that with the club and, and they can share the ambition of the club as well. So I think that's uh, encourages a lot more talent and young talent. I think uh, 
I think the game's a lot younger now in Championship where you know we're not seeing people come just for a last payday. You senior players dropping off, and that and with that that youthfulness comes the uh, enthusiasm and uh, and you know that that's bringing the game forward. And uh, it's it's a lot more up tempo. It's a faster game in Championship, and and it gets better quality. Uh, year on year, and, and, and this has sh shown that already. And it's, it's, a, it's a fast and exciting competition. Yeah, I think that you can look at the standard of the championship now by the fact that Super League are realistically looking at the championship for recruits. Mm -hmm. You know, Paul's got a standoff half there, Ryan Braley, and he's an absolutely exceptional player. I mean, he scores tried for fun, and he's somebody who should be looked at. I've always felt that. Mark's fullback should have been in Super League for the past two yeah. years, personally. I mean, I think he's a great player, and it mystifies me why they haven't had a look at him to do that. And, and you, right across the board, the, there are players like that. And it's, you know, it's a pleasure to work with them, and it's a pleasure when they get the opportunities in Super League to see how well they've done. And obviously, teams like Lee and Halifax and Sheffield and Featherston, they'll certainly be up there scrapping with the, the lower end of Super League without a shadow of doubt. Mark, you must agree, the, the quality is certainly there in Championship, isn't it? Yeah, man, we're all starting to look for the same thing, aren't we? And, you know, there's only so many of them going round. We're all looking for the younger ones that we can work with. And we've took a few from Salford alone. And we took um, young Jordan Burke from, from Warrington this week. Uh, because we're looking for, if they're not going to make it in Super League or they're not going to give them that opportunity, and are they getting that opportunity? You know, that's what Super League is about. Are they, had again that opportunity to play three, four games this year, six games next year, 12 games the year after. But if they're not, then they're seeing a different vehicle to, to probably get them there. Because as you say, there's people gone from the Championship into Super League now and, and doing really well. When you look at Alex from mm. uh, from you guys, yeah, from Batman. Well, the best yeah. performers yeah. this year are all, are all from yes. Championship. Yeah. Uh, Kyle Amor. Yeah. There's another Johnson and Johnson Johnson yeah, there yeah. at, uh, at Salford. Liam Finn, yeah. Finn yeah. Yeah. was considered yes. too old for yeah. Super League, yeah. and uh, he's one of the best halfbacks yeah. in Super League. I think on that point, what you said, John, uh, about uh, Super League taking a chance on these players, I think what that's what that mix of league will provide that second eight because it'll show these lads consistently performing against uh, higher level competition, and so at the end of that, if your team don't make the grade of the step up, which is going to be very very difficult. You're going to have a devil owns job uh, keeping all the some players because they've just gone and proved themselves to be able to compete mm. consistently on a high level. I was just going to say that it's yeah. going to be hard for you to keep on to the players because if you yeah. if you get the chance to play Super League, you want to hold on to your, to well, your best players, be and there's going to be people time. watching. It's a free look, if you like, for everybody because at the moment, uh, obviously, teams haven't had the bottle or uh, or the guts to take a chance on some of these players. We we would all agree that it's not really a chance because we, we're pretty convinced that there's some consistent players who are more than capable of stepping up. Yeah, and, well, uh, I think that, you know, Brian Noble worked for Premier Sports as a, as a pundit yeah. regularly last year, yeah. and it's no surprise to me. He's, he, he must be the Super League coach who watched the most championship, and he's, he's dipped his, his hands straight in and taken two. Yeah. And I'm sure if if, so the championship was regularly watched by all Super League coaches. Yeah. Be a lot more. It'll be cherry picked from all the various teams. The no doubt. It's the profile. Yes. You yeah. know, you, propaganda half of it. You know, you can talk a player into being a good one or a bad one through media and uh, and profile. So, uh, our championship players. That's uh, one one thing I'd like to see if we can increase the profile of them because mm. uh, uh, I often say it uh, in in our town of Lee. We're, we're somewhat. Um, I don't know if ignorance is the right word, but because of the lack of profile of championship, a lot of people in and around your own environment, in terms of spectators and people outside the playing squad, are unaware unaware of what talent mm. exists in different towns because they just they're not household names like you know like the Super League players. So I can assure you, there's quality throughout, and uh, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of names not not uh, household names, but. It's, uh, they soon will be, I'm sure, I've given half a chance. Well, I, I keep looking at the representative, uh, you know, calendar that they've got. They're saying about England against exiles. Well, t they've got an England Knights team. I'll tell you, I'd love to see England Knights play a Championship, championship. Select. Mm. I absolutely would, and I'll tell you what, it would be a sight nearer than the Samoa England Knights game, etc., was because uh, there's some high quality players in there, and uh, given an opportunity to test themselves against the very elite, they wouldn't let themselves down as well. Well, moving on to the, to the changes that we're, we're going to see then, the top nine secure their place at Championship, but also next season a chance to play Super League teams if you're up at the top. Has that been the biggest change, do you think the most important, most revolutionary change you've seen with the Championship since you've been involved? 
It probably has, you know, I've got different views on it, haven't I? And, you know, I speak my mind is that uh, I still don't see how it fits 1.8 million and whoever wins the league 500, what is that going to be, you know? And there's only going to be two, ah, there's four teams from Championship, I told them going to be Super League teams that have come down and got the the parachute payment, or oh, it isn't a parachute payment, it's just a payment, I believe. Um, so, you know, what? how significant is that going to be? And is it going to stop the growth of some of the Championship clubs? Because, you know, I, I just, I don't see it. I don't see that as many teams going to get up there because you're going to have to bundle a load more money into it. Who's got that money? I, I think there'll be a money ball team uh, come from the Championship who'll end up in the top four and getting Super League the year after. I really do, because uh, I think if you invest wisely, there's the talent there. And I don't think every Super League club perhaps has invested mm. wisely. And, uh, you know, the, the standard's pretty high at that top end. Mm. I just think it's a more of a long-term plan. Uh, get there in stages. And if you don't get if you don't get the top four, you, you, you come down and you go again with a bit of money in the bank. So uh, I think it's about being, being smart. It's not uh, all or nothing on that first attempt, it might take two, it might take three, but on that third, then you've got to go and do it and, uh, and make sure you get that top four. So stick with it. Let's all stick with it. Yeah, yeah, stick with it. yeah, yeah well, yeah. exactly. Yeah. But, but also, I mean, your team last year, I, I know you were very disappointed. Uh, I mean, you kindly invited all the 98 mm. team along to a reunion yeah. prior to the, the London game. Yeah. But the Sheffield club and players and coaching staff were very disappointed that they didn't knock London off. Mm. And I, I think, you know, mm. I think that was one of the worst games that yeah, Sheffield yeah, played yeah, last was, year. Yeah. You know, it's it just was. a shame it was yeah. when all the focus was on them. Yeah. But I'm pretty certain you can get a, a consistent team, which Sheffield yeah. obviously have been the last two years, knocking the bottom yeah. end of Super League off consistently well, with, with full-time prep. Yeah, yeah. Sheffield yeah. full-time yeah. prep. Again, if you go to Sheffield, you touched on it before on uh, QLT there, but the, Sheffield's back line is as good as probably quite a few mm. in Super League, without shadow of a doubt. You know, but there'd be a... Uh, if it, if it were free free for all, they'd be cherry picking them boys straight away. No, no question about it. Is is the championship treated fairly? Then think even with finances, with with whatever. It's that's a oh, difficult I... one to answer. <laughs> I mean, you know, everybody would like more money uh, to to that level, but also we're also yeah, responsible for generating our own money as well. Yeah. And uh, you know, spectators have got to come and watch us, and we've got to attract corporately as well. And you know, Mark does a great job with with Sheffield. They really do get some sponsors there, and and Paul's club Lee, their their crowds are going up because they're playing so well. So, I I, I certainly think there's hope for a, a couple of Championship clubs really to get in that top twelve over the first two or three years of this new structure. But I'm like Mark, they've, they've got to stick with it. Now we've decided it, stay with it for twelve years or whatever. And I'll tell you, if they do, it will just become second nature. Everybody will understand it, and everybody will realise what you need to do to achieve that top twelve. Because that was one of the other kind of sticking points as well, the whole understanding how this process works and what it's going to mean for each club and each league. That was like the playoffs, though. And yes, now it's correct. just second nature, yes. so I must admit to being uh, a little bit confused myself at the beginning, and I weren't Can't sure it was going to work. And uh, you know, you know, when I, I mix with a lot, a lot of people who are within the rugby circle, so it's quite hard to mm. explain at times. But uh, the best way to to probably explain it is that every game counts this time, mm. whether, whether you're in Super League or Championship, and surely that's got to be good for the game. Like you say, every every game counts. It's going to go right to the end of the season. There's no dropping off at, at the end of the year, is there, for anybody? No, especially especially them. You know, we've seen we've we've seen a lot of criticism in Super League of of clubs who's kind of written games off, just preparing for that last push right towards the end. But you could find some big teams uh, lingering around that bottom four. Uh, you know, what, just before this mixer league comes, whether that's due to injury or or just a poor lack of form, but. Uh, you can soon get dragged into that one, uh, no matter who you are, and uh, that's got to be exciting for the game. And if they are dragged into it, I'll tell you, a confident team against a team who's lacking in a bit of confidence because mm -hmm. they've had some adverse results, you know, it, it, it ain't all about ability, there's psychological aspects with confidence and so on, and uh, I, I just think it's going to be really, really interesting, and uh, as I say, I just hope we stick with it and let it develop and evolve, and it's not every game that counts, I think it's every minute that counts, because mm -hmm. you can't take your eye off the ball for one minute. I'll ask each of you your own opinion then. Is there something that's that's missing that the championship can still benefit from? I would, uh, me personally, I just think what I'd like to see is uh, is the rules become generic. 
decide whether we're not having the bonus point of Super League. I just think it's, it's having too much impact now. I think it's time, the beginning of this year it was time to go and it was also time to get rid of the duels if that's the case uh, because they can have too much influence on what's turning out to be a very, very costly exercise for all those championship clubs. Um, there's still loan, loan systems and, and, and go for it, fill your boots with loan players, but uh, I just think just just some clarity and some really strong and firm guidelines uh, in the rules process regarding them two things for me. Well, I'd go on to the development, which I would talk about, the, you know, the performance structures that you're not allowed to use. That's the big thing for me. I want I want the system exactly the same as it's super league for us at Sheffield Eagles because yeah. we want to develop players. That's that, why we set the club back up 14 years ago. Well, one day to have a team full of Sheffield people play. Well, if we can't play them in the... Super League Academy because we've been turfed out, uh, then how's it going to get better? You know, and I go back to years ago when Gary Eden put all the players together, me, Paul Bro, Bent Dale, lot and all that. What happened the first year we got promoted? We came down. The, this, that, the year after, we got used to winning again, we built us confidence back, went straight back up, and then we never came down again. You know, so, yeah. you know, we've started something with Sheffield, and, you know, the amount of people that spoke to me last year, how proud I should be with these kids from. South Yorkshire playing against Leeds Rhinos and things like that. And then it's taken away from us. Where do them kids go? How does it get better? Playing the 20s competition? Is the 20s competition across the board? Should be the 23s. What is the performance structure? And again, I'm confused with it. We can have a scholarship. Where does my scholarship go next? And that's what I want. I want a pathway. If they're going to have it in Super League, if we want to run one, why can't we? Because at the end of the day, they're playing at a high standard. Hopefully we'll develop them, and we've seen that over the years. That our scholarship started winning the old games, because we've grabbed them very close. That is progression for me, so that's what we're about, that's what we want to develop, and yet we can't have it all our way, you know, and, and why not? Yeah, I think it's transparency and, and stickability as well, and, and I, I, I'm agreeing with both Paul and, and Mark, you know, first of all, you can't have three and one bonus point and two points in Super League, especially when we're going to these three eights. Mm. I think it's got to be either two points for a win and none for a loss, or everybody adopts the, the, the bonus point aspect. I also think the dual reg should be done away with after this year, and, and we're a club who's used it in the past two years. But uh, I, I read a quote from a Super League coach saying that uh, you know, how were they going to develop young players now there was promotion and relegation? Well, young players will accelerate the development in intense games, but Super League, Super League clubs have got rid of the 20s. So don't start saying there's no way to develop players. What they need to do is invest in an under-23 with six overage players so you can get emerging youngsters playing against some tough so. seasoned professionals. And I'll tell you, you'll get a development structure there. Yeah. And, and then going back to Mark, the development structure he's implementing for top eight, mid, late, bottom eight as well. So that everybody knows where they're coming from and what they've to spend this increased money on. You know, it can't just be spent on players' wages. There's got to be structures and systems in clubs put in place. Certainly some interesting thoughts there. We wish you all the very best. Thank you, John, Mark and Paul. This has been another On Report for Super League TV. If you have missed any previous episodes, you can watch them now on this website here. We'll see you very soon. And...